Hi there everybody and uh, welcome to the organ loft here in the cathedral. It's a place that uh, not many people really get to come and uh, see close up so I hope that what I've got to say uh, in the next few minutes is interesting and gives you a little bit of an insight uh, into how the instrument works and what we have to do up here in the loft to make sure that we're using it and playing it in the right way. The organ is uh, one of the most prized possessions of the cathedral. Uh, it was built between 2010 and 2013 by uh, Nicholson's organ builders from Malvern and it is uh, the largest new cathedral organ to be built in the UK uh, since that of Coventry Cathedral in the 1960s. And I say that because there are other cathedral organs that have been built around the country uh, that come under the heading new, but this one is completely new. Nothing was recycled from any of the instruments that were in the cathedral before it was built here. So as you can see, the organ has uh, four keyboards uh, for the hands to play and of course one keyboard for my feet to play as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute about some of the sounds uh, that we can make with the organ um, in each of those different parts of the instrument. So the organ can be categorised as various different things. First of all, of course, it's a keyboard instrument. Um, but its similarities with the piano and the way in which we play it uh, pretty much begin and end with it looking quite similar. It doesn't feel the same uh, to play and it doesn't produce sound in the same way. And so the next thing that it is, is a mechanical wind instrument. So here we are on the north side of the cathedral in the organ chamber and we're at ground level at the moment and at this level of the instrument as you can see there's very little pipe work to look at, uh, that's all upstairs and we'll go and have a look at that uh, in a little bit more detail uh, later. But here we've got all of the uh, mechanical um, bits of the organ which create the wind which is so needed of course to power it basically. So behind me in this uh, box here are the turbines uh, that create the wind by spinning very quickly and the air then comes into the instrument first of all and is regulated at different pressures by these bellows, different sets of bellows with huge weights on the top to make sure that they are regulated at the right pressure. After the wind has passed through those then it goes through a series of wind trunking uh, and into the parts of the organ uh, where the pipes are where it arrives at the right pressure then so that they sound exactly the right notes when a key is pressed. So the instrument is split into different parts one for each keyboard uh, so four keyboards as we've said and one for the feet of course and we call those divisions okay so just like uh, you would divide anything up the instrument is divided into different parts each of those parts has its own characteristics, um, but some of them are very common between the different divisions. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about some of the stops that we have on the instrument here uh, and some of the sounds that you might expect to hear while we're playing. So I'm actually going to talk about uh, a set of stops which are on this side of the organ, uh, which uh, hopefully you'll be able to see uh, with some camera trickery in a minute. But the first one to talk about, really, uh, is the sort of fundamental sound of the organ. Now, if I asked you to draw a picture of an organ, you would probably draw a picture of some pipes that are very long and thin with a pointy end uh, at, at the bottom of them. They're what are called diapason or principal pipes, and they are what make up the fundamental sound of the organ and each of the divisions here at the cathedral has something approaching uh, that particular sound. So the first stop that I'm going to play to you is actually the swell diapason, open diapason, um, which makes a very clear sound. Uh, 
We've also, on this division, got some flute stops. And we've got some string stops. And we've also got some reed stops. They've got a reed which vibrates in the pipe to make the sound. And on this particular uh, division of the organ, we've got a quiet reed which is called an oboe. We've got an, a louder uh, reed which is called a cornopian. Now the other thing about the organ is that we can play uh, the instrument at multiple pitches at the same time. And by looking at the stops, I know uh, what pitch I'm expecting to hear. So inside the instrument, there are a lot of pipes. Each uh, stop has its own set of pipes, of course, and each of those stops uh, has enough pipes for each one of the notes on the division that it belongs to. So inside the organ there are uh, over 4,000 pipes in total. First of all we have stops which sound at the same pitch as we would expect a piano to play uh, and that's what we call eight foot pitch. Now the reason for that is that this, the pipe for the bottom note uh, is around eight feet in length and the stop head has got an eight on it which tells me that. So I know that if I play on this stop, again, the swell open diapason, that this chord would sound at the same pitch if I went downstairs and played it on the cathedral piano. If I want that to sound an octave higher, then I'll pull out a stop which has got four on it, where the bottom note is four feet in length. The pipe is four feet in length. So the same chord, but now sounding an octave higher. And we've also got stops which sound at two foot pitch. And that, again, the same chord, but sounds an octave higher than what we've just heard. And we can combine all those sounds to make a composite. So there we've got our family of diapasons uh, sounding together. We've also got the same in terms of flutes. Same chord, but on flutes. And we've also got the same on our powerful reed stops as well. Um, and we've also got, on this particular part of the organ, some stops which sound at 16 foot pitch. So that's an octave lower than what we would expect to find on a piano. So, if I play on a reed stop at, at 8 foot pitch and then one at 16 foot pitch you can hear the difference. And we can combine our reed stops again. To make a powerful sound. Uh, all together 16, 8 and 4, so sounding at three different pitches all at once. So I'm going to play a piece now which shows uh, just a sort of build up in sound. It's a march uh, and it's got a really strong rhythm, starts off with the feet uh, and it builds uh, up through some of those different pitches and different sounds. You'll see me changing the stops as I go along, so um, enjoy this little piece which shows off a little bit of what I've been talking about so far.
we've talked about one particular uh, division of the organ and now I'm going to talk about another. But just before I do that, I'll just explain a little bit about the four keyboards uh, and uh, what they're called and what they control. So the swell organ, which is here, which is the one we've talked about already, that's so called because it lives in a huge box uh, which we can cause to swell by opening and closing uh, the shutters. And you'll have seen in the recordings of the two pieces I've played so far with my feet that right in the middle of the pedal board there are two pedals which work uh, like that. And they're opening and closing huge shutters on the inside of the organ which help me to control the sound a little bit more. So that's the swell um, division. Uh, the next keyboard down here uh, is the grate and uh, this has got the most powerful uh, sort of fundamental stops of the organ. A big diapason family uh, at 16, 8, 4 and 2 foot pitch. we would use particularly for accompanying uh, hymn singing and things like that when the cathedral has got uh, a congregation in it. The division uh, on the grate has also got of course some families of other stops, so some flutes, it's also got some really powerful reed stops. So that's the grate over there. The bottom manual is called the choir, and that's because in uh, early English uh, organs it would have been a uh, division, surprise, surprise, which would have faced or accompanied the choir. And it's got some particularly more gentle stops uh, on it, but still the same families. So the diapason family. <laughs> Uh, and a flute family. And just one reed this time, which is called a Cremona, which is sort of like a clarinet. So now we're at first floor level um, of the organ, still on the north side, and here we have the great division, and you can see how all the stops uh, are laid out, uh, different types of pipes for different stops, some metal ones and some wooden ones, and you can also see how they're laid out on two sides, going from smallest to largest um, um, every time that we've got a different rank of pipes. Behind me over here uh, is still part of the great division. Um, we've got the great reeds, which are these ones that have got the sort of bent tops. And then behind that, even further towards the west of the cathedral, is the west great division, which is part of the organ which is used only for accompanying uh, congregations when the cathedral is absolutely full of people. Behind me again here now, you can see for the first time the shutters, and this is the solo box. And inside the solo box are all of the stops which belong to that particular division, apart from one, which I'll talk about a bit later. And there's some particularly interesting types of uh, pipes that you can see in here, with very interesting tops on them uh, for creating different effects and different sounds for those orchestral sounds that the solo division is um, intended to imitate. At the front of the solo box you can see the very powerful orchestral trumpet. And the solo division is designed to imitate lots of different uh, instruments as best it can. And by the nature of its name of course, uh, we use it for playing solos. So on this particular division, and this is the top keyboard I'm talking about now, the solo division, uh, in this particular part of the organ, we've got lots of stops which imitate orchestral instruments. So, 
I'll just talk about a few. So we've got some particularly powerful uh, strings. And we've also got uh, some flutes at eight, four and two foot pitches. So here's just the eight foot one. And now with the four foot one. And now with the two foot one. More interestingly on this particular division we've got stops which are as I say there to uh, imitate orchestral instruments so we've got a cor anglais we've got a corno di passetto which uh, is like an early clarinet Then we've got a trumpet. And the most powerful stop on the whole organ is the tuba on the solo. And this stop is designed so that it can be heard over the rest of the instrument. But the organ needs to be able to be controlled in different ways. And so we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a computer inside the organ console here, which allows me to change uh, stops without having to take my hands off the keys. And there are various ways in which we can do this. You'll see underneath each manual, there's a series of buttons. So the buttons underneath each keyboard uh, correspond to the stops for that division. And we've got eight for each one. So we can set as many or as, as few stops as we would like for each button. And that allows us to change the volume of what we're doing without taking our hands off the keys. So if you just listen while I play uh, uh, just on the grate, you'll hear a big change in sound while I go up through the uh, pistons, through the buttons uh, while I'm playing. So here we go. I can change the sound, I can change and uh, add and subtract pitches as I go along uh, through using these buttons. So just to demonstrate uh, how we can put all of these buttons to good use, I'm going to play another short piece now uh, which shows off quite a lot of registration changes.
So here we are, we're still at floor level inside the north side of the organ and uh, we're in part of the pedal division at the moment and behind me you can see some of the pipes, uh, wooden pipes, for the pedal eight foot flute. Um, just to, by way of explanation then, uh, we talked a little bit about how the wind uh, is regulated inside the instrument. But of course it travels then through the trunking to each part of the organ. Uh, when the organist pulls out a stop on the console, there's a slider underneath each rank of pipes, so the corresponding stop for the corresponding slider inside the organ. The slider moves across, and underneath each and every single note inside here, uh, there's a pallet which opens like that to allow the wind to pass through into the pipe at the right pressure to make the note sound. So, for example, uh, here we've got uh, Note B, which is uh, one of the shortest uh, pipes on the pedal eight foot flute, so quite high up uh, on the rank. And uh, it would, it sits in its hole here uh, in the soundboard, and then the wind is passed through to make the note sound. And you can see in this particular pipe uh, how beautifully made it is with its mouth, and it's got a foot where the wind passes through then uh, into the pipe itself to make the pipe sound. There we go. I think the organ's probably better at that than I am. So uh, now we're standing in the sort of northeastern corner of the organ case, so as far away from the uh, congregation as you can get on any uh, general day and uh, we're in among some of the very largest pipes uh, of the organ here so some of the ones that are approaching 32 feet in length the bottom note um, but what i want to just talk about a little bit really are these pipes behind me now these belong to the 32 foot reed so very low very powerful sound um, that the organ has to offer and you can see that uh, to create um, enough space for them to stand in uh, they're bent over on themselves, a bit like a French horn, really, um, so that they can fit in a slightly smaller space than they would have to if they were just one long pipe. That's called mitering, and lots of the longest metal pipes in the organ are mitered like that uh, for the pedal 32 foot reed and uh, for the bombard, which stands in front of it as well. So the last part of the organ that I feel I should just talk about a little bit is the pedal division. Uh, of course, uh, organists play with hands and with feet as well. And the pedal division really is to provide the bass part for everything that we play um, here on the organ. And so the stops are of a, a lower pitch than those that, which we find on the manuals generally. Uh, and so everything is, starts off at 16 foot pitch, so that's an octave below uh, what we would usually want to find on a piano. You can see the pedal board here uh, and the notes uh, on the pedal board go from C, so this C here, up to G on our pedal board here. Uh, and those are the notes which the feet have to choose from uh, to play. So the pipes and the stops of the pedals are of a particularly uh, lower pitch, as I've said and uh, most of them are 16 foot pitch, uh, an octave below uh, piano pitch, and some go down to 32 foot pitch. So I'm just going to play you a few examples now. We've got the same families of stops on the pedal division as we find on all of the other divisions of the organ as well. So we've got flute stops, so these are 16 foot pitch. We've got open diapason stops. We've got things called open woods, which are particularly large scale uh, wooden pipes inside the organ. We've got those at 16 foot pitch and at 32 foot pitch, so an octave lower than that. Particularly rumbly sound. And we've also got uh, reeds, 
really, really powerful reeds which underpin the sound of the whole organ. And we've got reeds at eight foot pitch, so just like on the manuals. 16 foot pitch. And 32 foot pitch, so now two octaves below what we would usually find on a piano. And we've got those in different uh, uh, colours, different capacities, which underpin the whole organ, as I've said. So some really powerful reed stops, particularly one which is uh, most people's um, favourite when they come to play this organ, which is called Bombard, which is extremely powerful. <laughs> Only to be reserved for the most extreme occasions or a normal Sunday morning.